This is problem 16.14. It is on page 727. An 80-pound cabinet is mounted on casters which allow it to move freely with a friction coefficient of zero on the floor. If a 50-pound if a force is applied as shown, determine A, the acceleration of the cabinet, B, the range of values of H for which the cabinet will not tip. We'll make a sketch of this so you can understand what they're asking. There's the ground. There's the casters that this relatively tall, skinny thing is mounted on. There's G. There's the weight of 80 pounds force. And there's a, a pushing force of 50 pounds applied, but we don't know at what height yet. The center of gravity is located at 35 inches, and I'm going to define that as Y sub G. Now, note that the friction coefficient mu is zero. The width of this cabinet, or at least between the wheels, really, what it's supposed to be, I guess I'll put it at the bottom for that reason. The distance between the floor supports are 20 inches, and I'm going to define that as a dimension, lowercase d. Now, let's set up our coordinate system, x, y. And I want to find the range of h for no tipping, and of course I need to find the uh, acceleration. Let's start off with a free body diagram. Uh, let's see, weight acts down. There's a reaction at A, and a reaction at B at the two wheels, and then force P is pushing. Now this will be equal to the kinetic diagram, which is the result of these forces, which is an acceleration or a dynamic force in the x direction and, of course, the y direction. Although, of course, we're assuming this won't lift off the floor, and so we'll take the dynamic force in the y direction to be uh, effectively zero. So if we sum forces in the x direction, let's see, we'll get p, and that equals mass times acceleration in the x direction. So the acceleration in the x direction, which is one of the things we're supposed to find, I guess this is given, and here's the find. Uh, acceleration in the x direction and h for no tipping. Okay, so ax is pretty easy to come up with. It's just the force divided by mass. Well, the force being applied is 50 pounds, and the mass is simply 80 pounds mass. Again, these are not units that we're used to using for acceleration, but they are valid units of acceleration. The pound force per pound mass is an acceleration dimension uh, or unit for the dimension of acceleration. Uh, what we usually like is feet per second squared. So let's write 32.2 uh, pound mass feet per second squared per pound force. Now, if the pound force and pound mass are canceled like that, then we can plug this into our calculator and find that this is 20.125 feet per second squared. So we've taken care of the acceleration in the x direction. Now, if we sum forces in the y direction, we'll find that the reaction at A plus the reaction at B uh, minus the weight, for, weight force equals the mass times acceleration in the y direction, which is zero. Therefore, the reaction at A plus the reaction at B must be equal to the weight of the cabinet. Let me label this equation 1. Now, if we sum moments about the center of gravity, what we'll find, uh, let's see about the center of gravity, what we'll find is d over 2rb, in other words, b has a positive moment, right, and I'm taking d over 2, so half of that distance between them minus d over 2 ra, the reaction at a has an opposite moment, and then p also of course has a moment, that is yg minus h. How did I come up with that? Well, let's see, if I'm summing moments about this point, and p is below the center of gravity, if I imagine that way it's helpful for setting up the equation, then it would be yg minus h, that's this distance here. Now that still works even if p happens to be above, because yg minus an h above would give me a negative number and make the moment, the effective moment of this force going the opposite direction would be a negative moment in that case. And so that's fine. That's what I want. 
I don't know where H is right now. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, since I'm summing moments about the center of gravity, I'll just take I alpha on the right-hand side. The moment arm of the dynamic forces are zero. And so, uh, also assuming this thing doesn't start tipping and gain some angular, acceler or angular speed, the angular acceleration must be zero. And so what this leads me to is that d over 2 times rb minus ra, just collecting uh, factoring out d over 2, minus pyg equals ph. Now the reason I did it this way is because I'm interested in the ranges of h. I'd like to solve for h from this equation. In fact, that's the next step. h then is simply d over 2p, just moving this p to the other side, multiplied by rb less Ra uh, plus Yg. Let me call this equation two. Now let's think about this for just a minute. If this thing starts to uh, tilt or tip clockwise, what does that mean? Well, let's see. Clockwise tip implies that Ra has gone to zero. Right? There's no more support here. It's about to tip over or lose contact with the floor on the left-hand side. It doesn't mean that it's that the center of gravity is past the point where it will fall on its own. It just means that it's it's at the on the verge of, of, of tipping, right? And we don't want that. So let's see. What this means then, if, if R A is zero, well then we can rewrite this equation and say H equals, we need D, well that's 20 inches divided by 2 times P, where P is the pushing force. 50 pounds of force. And then RB, well, let's see, what would RB come out to? Well, if RA is zero, then RB must be equal to the weight, right? So this RB would just be the weight, which is 80 pounds of force, minus RA, but we already said RA is zero, plus YG. And YG is, of course, 35 inches. Notice that the pounds force cancel and we're left with H in inches as we would expect. And so H is equal to 51 inches. Now what about counterclockwise tipping? Well, if it's starting to tip counterclockwise, that means RB has gone to zero. And so H equals, let's see, 20 inches over 2, over 50 pounds force. And now let's see, if RB is 0, then this term is gone, but from the sum of forces equation, the weight must be equal to RA, or RA is equal to the weight. And so we'd have 0 minus 80 pounds force, again, the pounds force go away, plus YG, 35 inches. When you plug this into your calculator, you'll find that H is equal to 19 inches. So if we put this force too low, anywhere below 19 inches, we'll tend to tip the thing counterclockwise, right? We'll, we'll be pushing at it so low that we'll tend to tip it with a 50 pound force counterclockwise. If we put P too high, if we put it at 51 inches, which is of course above the center of gravity, and apply 50, pounds for, 50 pound force uh, pushing, then we'll end up making RA go to zero, which means that the thing can, can tip. So the range of H that is acceptable so that we can avoid tipping is between 19 and 51 inches.